The miracle I chose for this week's reflection is the earthquake. It is from the Acts of the Apostles. Here we find Paul and Silas in prison. St. Paul probably spent more time in prison than any other person in the Bible. Some of his writings were written by him while in prison. In particular, his letters to the Philippians, Philemon, and Colossians. It's not surprising that he ends up in prison so frequently. He's a Jewish man preaching about this person, Jesus Christ. And whenever he, wherever he, he goes, he sh he's sharing a message that is in stark contrast to those who hear him. Many of his fellow Jewish leaders don't appreciate his understanding of Judaism and the Gentiles, often don't understand or appreciate his Jewish identity or because of Jesus, they should, why they should become a part of his faith tradition. Everywhere people find Paul's words or practices upsetting, and, and so everywhere he's getting into trouble with the authorities in the towns, sometimes beaten and ending up in prison. The beginning of chapter 16 of the Acts tells us that Paul and Silas and a group of other disciples in the early church, are visiting Philippi to share the gospel there. At the beginning of the chapter, they meet a woman named Lydia, a businesswoman, a cloth dealer. After learning about Jesus, she and all her household are baptized. Lydia urges the missionaries to stay at her home. She's a woman of some wealth and can provide for everyone. The apostles are using her house as a home base. Each day they head into town and to preach and share the gospel with others. Every day they encounter a slave girl. She's a clairvoyant and makes a lot of money for her masters by telling people their fortunes. When she sees Paul and the others, she starts to follow them and yelling out, These men are slaves of the Most High. God, who proclaims to you a way of salvation. She does this constantly every day. Acts tells us Paul is very much annoyed, and apparently his annoyance leads to a desire to heal the girl. Paul orders the spirit to come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ, and it does. Suddenly, the slave girl has lost her money-making capacity for her owners, they seize Paul and Silas, Silas and drag them to the local magistrates and accuse them, saying, They are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us Romans to adopt or observe. The crowds join in with the accusations, and the local authorities have them stripped, beaten, and thrown into prison. The prison guard puts them in the innermost cell and fastens their feet in stocks. Acts is careful to note where Paul and Silas are held would be entirely in darkness. Chains to bind prisoners were heavy iron chains, which were particularly painful to bodies that had just been beaten and flogged. It's a dreadful situation. Paul and Silas find the strength to spend their time in prison praying and singing hymns. It's midnight, and the text says that other prisoners are listening to them. Imagine them all in the stifling darkness, but Paul and Silas are lifting up words of hope. Suddenly there's an earthquake. The quaking causes the doors of the prison to be opened and the chains of the prisoners to fall off. The jailer awakes, sees the chaos, and gets ready to take his own life, despairing at the complete failure of his job. But Paul and Silas have not escaped, and neither have any other prisoners. Paul speaks to prevent the jailer from hurting himself, and the jailer rushes in with lights, falls down before Paul and Silas and asks what he must do to be saved. Paul and Silas tell the jailer about Jesus. 
The jailer takes them to his house. They share the good news of God's grace, not just with him, but the whole household. The jailer and his family decide to become baptized and to become Jesus' followers. There are four lessons to be learned from this scripture passage. First, Lydia and her family are, are converts to Christ by listening to the apostles' preaching. This gives them a place to stay. Next, the slave girl is freed of her demons. But her freedom came at a price for Paul and Silas. Freedom always has a cost. It is never free. The most obvious is that of the earthquake. It freed Paul and Silas. God, hearing the prayers of Paul and Silas, freed them, giving them the opportunity to bring conversion to the other prisoners and the jailer. And lastly, the jailer and his family are converted to Christ. Amen.